I'm with George Latham, the managing partner at uh, Web Asset Management. George, it's great to see you. Um, see you, Joe. There's a lot of talk of uh, ESG being at a uh, tipping point at the moment. Um, what does that mean for you in practice? Well, I think it's quite interesting thinking about that question in the context of the markets that we're in at the moment and the current sort of crisis, if you like, because um, uh, having been around a while and in sustainable investing for a while, uh, it's you know it's interesting to, re to to the perspective of what's happened around sustainable investing in the last few crises, because the the, the tech bubble in 2000, 2001 and the general financial crisis in 2007, eight. Um, were both coincident with a kind of clean tech bubble um, and bust at the same time. So um, both of those um, market cycles uh, set back the agenda, I think, for sustainable investing quite substantially. So they're, they're, they're a, a lot of clean tech stocks uh, were rising along with internet technology stocks in the late 90s uh, and, uh, and and the bubble burst very dramatically, obviously, uh, and that, uh, that, that, that set back, you know, Met, set, set a couple of uh, several uh, clean energy companies uh, went under, or you know couldn't get access to finance in the aftermath of that. I remember going, you know, talk, trying to talk to people about sustainable investing in the sort of 2009, 10, 11 period, where uh, in the, in the run up to the general financial crisis, you had all sorts of clean energy funds being launched. And, and clean energy stocks got to stupid valuations um, and, and the, the bubble burst and it burst for clean energy stocks at the same time. And, and really, people didn't want to in engage around sustainable investing in the immediate aftermath of that because a lot of people had had, had their fingers burnt, uh, burnt. The difference this time is that I think really people, A, have seen that sustainable funds, ESG funds, whatever you want to call them, have generally proved to be somewhat more resilient um, in this crisis so far. Um, uh, than 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 uh, than the market as a whole. Um, they've they've shown a degree of resilience, um, and really, I think a, a, increasingly people are looking at sustainability or ESG or this 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 market, our our area of investment, as as a way to lead out of the crisis. Um, so 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 I think um, you know, we were seeing an exponential growth in interest in sustainable investing, impact investing, ESG, in the whole area in the run up to the crisis. Uh, but rather than this being an occasion where that bubble has been pricked or that 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 uh, that, uh, that, that, that this is has, has set us back this could actually be a galvanizing event uh, for our industry as we lead out of the crisis to see that um that that real momentum take hold uh and and, and i think that's something that um that that is a, po a point for optimism uh, around uh the current dramatic events obviously if you think of resilience, you also think of long-termism, but this mm. seems to be a series of short terms added together. How do you think about long-termism from your perspective? Well, we, I mean, we, you know, we pride ourselves on being long-term investors. It's what we're about. Um, but, uh, but, but being long-term is doesn't mean you ignore what's happening in the short term. It's really about how you put it into context of what it means uh, over the long term. So I, we think of ourselves as investors rather than traders. And that means that you know movements in markets in the short term will give opportunities for long-term investors. So, um, so in the very sort of short-term sense, uh, in in our portfolio, we've seen companies that we've admired as potential investments for a long period of time, but found uh, thought of as too expensive to invest in um, historically. Of you know, in in in, the, in the, as we got through the the, the market crisis in. Uh, in, during March, we found opportunities to to buy one or two new stocks that we hadn't owned previously because valuations had come down to more attractive levels. So that seems like a trade, but actually it's an investment because we're taking advantage of a short-term uh, uh, sort of issue in order to make a long-term decision. Um, but really, I think around uh, you know there, there are two aspects of, of you know so so so, so long-termism is about a culture of investment rather than a a style of trading i think and so uh it's really about thinking about what's happening in the current environment what the crisis means for the long-term themes around sustainability uh what it means for uh the focus on corporate resilience you use the word resilience yourself and it's something that we've used a lot recently about thinking about which companies are run in a way that is most resilient to exogenous shocks and really ESG investing or sustainable investing is really about building portfolios that are that, that are designed to be more resilient to exogenous shocks. And when we, we, we worry about or we think about 
uh, the issues related to climate change, you know, climate change may be a long, slow, slow moving uh, sort of momentum around a changing climate, but what it will mean in economic terms is fast moving shocks at certain periods of time. And so we need to set up portfolios well in advance of those those shocks because they're unpredictable in their in in, in their appearance. Uh, but it, but it, but in order to be prepared for that, so that, so our whole portfolio strategy at Web is about building a portfolio which is aligned with uh, or, or built invested in companies which are enabling and benefiting from a transition to a more sustainable economy, uh, so that when you see those shocks, that the that the companies that you were invested in should be uh, well positioned to both contain the impact of those shocks, but also prepared to take advantage of the opportunities those shocks create. Um, I think in terms of you know, people clearly become very focused in periods of crisis around short term concerns. Um, and it's really uh, the responsibility of fund managers, particularly fund managers who set them up, themselves up to be longer term, to lead the to, to, to lead their communications around longer term events. You know, it's our responsibility at this time to take that longer term view and that longer term view will uncover the opportunities and protect us from the threats. Uh, in in short term crises, what what is your message to clients? What's your message to to your client base? I think it's twofold, really. I mean, first, the first thing is that we're you know we're still we're still here, we're still operating, and you know in 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 a, in a sense we're we're getting on with the job. You know, I may be at home, you know, in 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 my attic, um, but 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 really. On a day-to-day -day basis, the team is operating as usual, is continuing as usual, and we're here focused on the task at hand, which is to make sure that our companies are okay, um, the companies we're investing in are okay, you know, due diligence, the, re the ongoing resilience of our portfolio companies, um, and, and to look for new opportunities and to take a calm and level-headed view of the, of the situation that we find ourselves in uh, and think about the impact that it has no, for 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 the for the marketplaces that companies that we invest in operate in, and uh, and and the the strength of companies that we we invest in and their ability to take advantage of that and protect uh, and, and protect and, and protect capital uh, from being eroded by the by the current situation. I, I think, think that oh, sorry, sorry, I was going to say that, that I think that so so you know it's business as usual in 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 many senses. Uh, you know our, our operations, obviously. Uh, you know the, the strength of our operations, our ability to communicate with clients as well. Uh, we were talking uh, uh, just a moment ago before we started here about um, our you know, moving from physical conferences to online webinars and our ability to you know to, to to connect with our clients and keep them updated and informed in that way is critically important in this kind of environment. And so we focused a lot on that. Um, but really, I think the other message, you know, apart from the kind of day to day business as usual message is that um, is is what this crisis means in the context of sustainability um, and uh, and I think it's making us think about resilience is a word we've used a few times it's making us think about um, the connectivity of our society with nature um, and uh, and the importance of those things uh, and, uh, and and that and how that is likely to influence the you know the changing shape of markets and society and the economy as we as we emerge from this crisis and how we need to be set up through our portfolios uh, to position our clients' capital in the most advantageous way for that. You you talked that this could be a galvanizing moment. What does what does the future of asset management itself as an industry look like once we're through this? Yeah, I mean, I think um, no, we, there was a great phrase on the radio this morning. That, but we need to, we need to, we need to prepare ourselves. Um, you know, we need not not to go back to business as usual, but we need to go back to the business that we that, that we need to go back to the future that we want to create. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've, I've paraphrased. I've, I, you know, I haven't got the wording exactly correct, but we we we, we need to to think about uh, how, what our reaction to the current crisis unveils about how we can work better and smarter. In the future, you know, we, I was just mentioning a moment ago how you know we are, are we can connect better with clients. We can keep better clients and our investors better informed through better use of digital communications and, web, and webinars and the like. And you know, we've already done an amount of that over the last few weeks, and and that's absolutely uh, you know, the kind of client communication that's going to be here to stay uh, and that we need to build on. And I think, in many ways, may well be better than some of the client communication that we've had in the past. 
um, we've learned a lot about flexible working. What was our BCP plan, our business continuity plan, is now our business as usual plan for the foreseeable future. Um, uh, and but you know we've we've always been keen to embrace flexible working from the team, but you know not always lived it all the time. Um, we're now all thoroughly aware of how workable it is to be working um, sometimes at distance, sometimes more flexibly. We all sometimes are also working out how much we miss being in the office sometimes and the, and the connection with each other and the sort of connection with other people that we miss. Um, but we can enable both. And I think in a, in a, in a future world, uh, we will take advantage of both, you know, the higher levels of productivity sometimes we have through being at home and undisturbed, uh, but also embrace the, uh, the, the, the human contact that we have when we're back together in the office. So I think there's kind of ways of working and ways of communicating that will change. Um, I think there's, you know, I, 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 there's a hope that the industry, the financial services industry, will emerge from this current crisis with a renewed sense of responsibility, of uh, responsibility of its role in uh, its role in society, its ability to work for the benefit of its consumers rather than work for the benefit of itself. Um, and so, I mean, I think that's probably more of a hope than necessarily. A truism, but uh, but uh, but you know, I think there's a kind of a momentum of uh, you know of of ambition, of feeling, uh, certainly amongst the the sort of ESG industry that, that that hopes that this might be an outcome. But we need to work pretty hard to make that a reality. I think, um, and uh, and but the point I made a, a moment ago about uh, how I think this, you know, the, the the experience of sustainable investing through this crisis, I think, certainly gives some real hope. That, uh, that this could be a galvanizing moment for the industry and, 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 and a tipping point for, for really going past the point of no return where this really does become the future of the fund management industry. On that note, uh, George, thank you so much. Thank you, Daniel. Good to speak to you. Take care. Okay.